Hello, folks. Hi there. So I know Emil won't join today. Uh, he's only has a, a strong headache. So let's wait maybe another minute and see if someone else is joining before we start. Hi, Tracy. Hello there. How's it going? Yeah, very well. Me, yeah, thanks. And you? Good. We have a good news to report. Nice. I wonder where our fearless leader is today. He's out sick today. Oh, he is? I was going to take a sick day. Um, I'll send him an email, um, but I think the, the fun stuff is Steve, Steve and I attended the strategy meeting for the C, uh, CD Foundation at the Linux Membership Summit. And uh, they went around the room talking about what should be our primary focus, what should be our primary focus. And um, Steve kept saying events, and I kept saying events. <laughs> And then finally, somebody asked, what is events? You know, what, what are you doing? And so we explained that we were creating kind of a standard platform and we try to explain it in, in, in a way that everybody could understand it. And at the end, everybody voted it would be our primary focus. So events now has been moved up the chain to be our primary focus. I think they're starting to understand that, you know, the CD Foundation needs something exciting and new that all the, app, all the members can get behind and, um, we, uh, we got that done. Cara was there. Uh, you're on mute, Cara. You're on mute. Yes, you did a fantastic job leading the discussion, Tracy. So thank you for really I'm pushing sorry. that forward. It was really I'm, well fun. I am super excited. I'm excited for the CD Foundation to recognize the importance of this particular working group and SIG um, because it, I don't think it was getting the attention. Now the goal will be is we need to be reaching out to all the members who should be interested in this, um, like Harness, um, Circle CI, uh, JFrog. We got, uh, we definitely got Steve Chen's um, uh, attention, and even even like uh, Google around uh, their, what do they call it, cloud build. So we, the the goal here is now that we have their attention, we really need to get some of these other members in on this conversation. And I think that will happen as we move forward, getting, you know, getting all the groundwork set up. And we explained that we had a basic POC. So what I'm hoping is that maybe, um, and Cara, maybe with your help, maybe uh, 
sometime in the early part. I don't want to do it now because we'll lose momentum, but if we do it, say, in January or February, and we put a webinar together and we invite all of those uh, member companies that we know should be involved in this, uh, maybe we can uh, get a conversation going. Right, and so the timeline for that you're thinking is in the new year? In the new year, because if we do it now, we will. It'll lose momentum. People will forget about us. If we do it in, uh, you know, mid January, when everybody's gotten back to work and their heads kind of back together, I think that it, that would be good. And we'll have all the other stuff defined. I think we're close to de determining what our logo needs to look like, and we'll be more. We'll, we'll feel more official. And and also, I think by then the the project should be approved by the CDF. Um, the also uh, one of the things that we'll need to do, and I, I kind of see this as a, a big plus for the for events, is that we're going to need to uh, reach out to the other organizations like the CNCF um, and some of the other, um, you know, stuff around ML and AI are going to need to be involved as well. So I think it's going to be a great way for our the CD Foundation to broaden their horizon and bring some more visibility um, across all the Linux Foundation orgs. Yeah, so we are um, on the Ortelia side, we're working on a, um, we have a, a kind of what we call our GitOps strategy and it includes um, Captain and it includes Argo and it includes um, uh, Ortelius. Uh, and it's really an event-based um, uh, demo, I guess you call it, or POC. Um, it'd be nice if we brought that over to Captain and Argo so they can see what we're doing, for example. So on that note, I am uh, working on the proposal uh, based on the new template for that the TOC is outlined. Um, so I will create a PR. Uh, so the PR is going to go against the CDF TOC repo. And I, once I get uh, the PR created, I'll put it in draft mode so everybody can um, view it and make comments on it before uh, we submit it. But that's where I'll post it so everybody can view it. Unless we want to go off one of our, our repos um, and go that route, go off of a, a CD events repo and do the PR between the CD events and the CD foundation. Doesn't matter to me or, or whatever you guys feel like would be the, the best visibility. Uh, I think the DSC repo sounds good to me. That's, but I thought that would be the, the, the process. Yeah, it, it, there. yeah the, the, it, gets, it gets pushed to the, the, the CD CD Foundation TOC repo, but coming, it has to come from a repo. And what I'm wondering is if we should have it come from a CD events repo or my private repo. Oh, I see. I mean, yeah, we can do a CD events repo, sure. Okay, so if you could create a CD events, uh, like CDF TOC repo and, uh, as empty and I'll clone in do all the or actually um there would be that one would be a fork from the cdf toc so we need a i don't know if i have access right uh yeah, so we okay. need a fork uh cd foundation toc into a cd events uh repo right so If I do new, can I specify? No. No, I think you have to go to jump to CD Foundation and then TOC. Right. Uh, if I fork this, now uh, fork that and try the fork and see if it'll go allow you to fork it into um, if it lets you choose the destination. All right, yeah. Yeah, there it is. That's it. Right. Um, 
perfect. Okay. Awesome. And now I will um, make our changes there and let everybody know uh, what will happen is there's a proposals directory underneath that, and that's where um, the CD events proposal will go. Thanks. Great, thanks. Perfect. It, I'll, I'll have it done this week. So um, it's just finding a lot of stuff. Like um, I know I see here in the notes we have a Twitter account now underscore CD events. Um, do okay. we have a Facebook or any other social media? Um. No. Okay, that's there. fine. Um, I'm trying to think what other ones. We have our Slack channel, right? That's off of the the SIG events yes. Slack channel. Okay, I'll grab that one. Um, and the only other thing that I really kind of need, uh, we don't have to decide this today, but the, um, the logo, which one we're going to go with. Yeah. Um... Right, so I don't know what the data situation is on that. Um, but yeah, we can, uh, we, we get to that in a moment. I think yep. we go to the action list. Um, but yeah, great news. So, um, so it was the Linux Foundation leadership, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah we did a membership summit. And there was about, uh, Cara, how many people were there that were members? Probably eight. Google was At the there. Board yeah, tel uh, test Teslia was there. We were there. J uh, JFrog was there. Netflix. Netflix was there. And then there was um, Cara and Jackie and Tracy. You know, I, I, I em emphasize to them that my strong opinion that we needed to have um, a focus on something that was a little more new and shiny uh, and that the events um, project was our best sh shot at having something new and shiny. And something that's really coming out of the CDF, you know, not not just something that's being brought in, but really growing out of the collaboration within the CDF. I think that's a great space for the CDF to be in and to be promoting and to be showing that we're actually having running initiatives in this. So I think this should really be, uh, as you proposed, Tracy, a real, um, I mean, like showcase project for the CDF, but actually something that's really central to what the CDF should be doing. Yes, I do too. And that's why I think that getting, now that it, we really have to get some of the other, um, some commitment and some eyes from, I think the ones that we need the most are from um, Circle CI and Harness. Those two, we really need to be able to bring in somebody. And probably from the Spinnaker side as well. And Spinnaker, absolutely. How did I forget that? We already have some eyes from Jenkins, and I'm hoping that from the Google of uh, the summer Google, what do they call it? Google Summer of Code. I'm hoping yeah. that we can get to keep somebody from Jenkins um, involved. So those would be the four, the two. Uh, let me let me look. Are we? Oh, and you know what? Of course, screwdriver. So, Carl, I don't know if there's something in that area you can help us with, because you might have access to the, the names that we need to reach, to reach out to, because that's part of the problem that I have found is that we don't know who to call. You know, and I've, I've hunted down through LinkedIn folks, but that doesn't mean that they're um, the right person. Right, right. Okay, I'll look into outreach for these five five groups. Well, Jenkins continued involvement and then the other. So I think with Jenkins, even though they've gotten a good start, we need somebody from, um, I'm, 
I'm guessing we might want to pull somebody in from CloudBees because that would mean that they would have a more of a, a, a focus on it. Oh, we had a new hire just as I was leaving. I'm um, actually, this is really his space. He, he was very in the, um, he might be interested. I mean, we'll see how he's adjusting and stuff, but that might be a perfect person actually. He was on the outreach community team, open source. And we do so, have, uh, even though we're going to be talking mainly about Artilius, I do have another call. I have another call with Michael Neal tomorrow. I'm, I'll bring it up to him as well. And let him know that this is happening and that maybe the electric cloud folks should be thinking about electric flow and events. Yeah. Yeah. There was definitely interest within CloudBees for some of their more internal things for using. So they are aware of this. It was something I spoke about within the company and other people did, and they were looking at it. In fact, I think the Jameses were involved a little bit, or Rawlings was, but then, you know. <laughs> Maybe if we get some of the Jameses more excited, they can push it internally. Neither are at CloudBees anymore. Really? Neither of them. Okay. No, no, Rawlings is at VMware and Strachan is now at Apple. Yeah, so it might be hard to find somebody at CloudBees that we need to talk to because it's been going through somewhat of a, a flux. Yeah, Oleg is uh, not at CloudBees anymore as well. I know. But he, he's still he's still working on, on Jenkins and is definitely interested in this project as yeah. well. So. Yeah. But from a financial standpoint um, and to get a, so what we need to be able to do um, is get some money behind this project. So it's not just us trying to put it together. Uh, so that's why it's gonna be important to get um, the attention of like CloudBees and Harness and, um, and Armory. Or OpsMex. Right, that will spin a curve, right? It's just, it's just MX, Steve. Is, is Ops MX still a, uh, a member? Yeah, as far as I know. So yeah, if, so if, Carl, if there's something you can do to help us do some outreach in that area, I'm happy at any time to get on a, on a phone or even make the phone calls if I have the contact info. I can reach out to um, uh, Gopal at uh, OpsMX. You know, I think that Armory is going to have a, have better resources for doing it, um, just because OpsMX is smaller. But I know that Armory just went through a, a CEO change. Okay, so I'll liaise with you, Tracy, and 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 get sort of think about which contacts and then we can maybe arrange some calls or I can get some started and then pull you in. Okay, that'd be fine. I'd be happy to. Thank you. So I'd mark you two then to drive uh, getting in touch. Yep. Uh, reaching out. Yep. We'll make that our task between now and January, February timeframe that we can at least have a conversation with them. Sounds good. You know, another company we might reach out to, I don't, um, I do know one person there, I believe I still know them, is Codefresh. Just, they don't have to be member companies, they just have to be in our space and want to join an open source project, right? Yeah. Yes. Codefresh might be interested they were really interested just recently on the landscape loads and loads of ideas on how to recategorize and stuff they really came in with ton, tons of stuff like strong opinions for for a group that i hadn't heard you know we hadn't interacted with that much before at least i hadn't um so that was really nice so they they may very well be interested in getting more involved in various initiatives like this should be good well if you have a whoever was who was it that you were talking to dan garfield um, I have to look. Sometimes they have their GitHub names or not their. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have to, I have to look. 
Are we missing any of the major uh, orchestration tools in that list? Is there you, something mentioned, you, you, you mentioned uh, Cloud Run, uh, Cloud Cloud Builds or Cloud Run? Yeah, I'm Google sure. Google Cloud Build. Cloud Build from Google. Yeah. I, don't know if, I mean, there is GitLab CI. Uh, yeah, I was going to say if we go down that route, we'd have GitLab, GitHub. Well, let's just at least add GitLab. I think GitHub is not as they have actions, um, which we might want the. We may as well add them, right? I mean, um, I wouldn't consider GitHub a orchestration engine, but they do have actions. They, they do produce events, and they can. Yep. I mean, yeah, we we have a one one of the buckets of events is. Uh, like yeah, good management. Um, so I mean, all, all the like the Git hosting companies would be sorts of events that are relevant. But um, I I don't know. Um, I guess we would have to identify whether there there is a good business case for them to kind of align with our protocol. Um, well, that's what they. To... Yes, that's exactly what we have to figure out a business case for them to align with the protocol. You, you summed it up in a perfect sentence, Andrea. <laughs> and yeah, so I, I guess um, one thing is to, to reach out to, to all these companies. Um, then you mentioned we should set, try and set up a webinar on next year. And I guess then maybe we should try and focus then until the end of the year in making a compelling presentation. Like, I don't know if it's based on the POC that we already have and, and reach it or discuss what we want to, to present to. Yep. To make I it think, compelling. I think that's a great idea. And in the meantime, Car can start working on the list of people who we need to reach out to, and then we'll be set up for doing something in early January or February. And Cara, if you want to get initial uh, initial calls scheduled before then, um, we can just let them know that we're going to plan this call, and that we want to find out who um, who should be invited. It, this would be um, sort of reaching out to see who would like to be at the the meeting, the webinar in the new year. But even prior to that, we want to have more involved discussions and start bringing in real contributors from these projects if possible. Yes. Okay. That's what I don't know. I should call it business case. Not really my area of expertise. <laughs> and it's possible since this is a uh, kind of a primary push that we can get Tracy Miranda to be part of the, the calls and, and give it a little bit of, um, uh, give it a push. I think, you know, it does matter when it comes from her. Agreed. Okay. Right, that's exciting. Sounds yeah. like we have a lot to do. <laughs> yes, it is exciting. Um, and you know, I think that the lot to do is to really bring in the community so that there's not just a small handful of us trying to code it and work on it. Um, you know, if we could get uh, resources that have given in, you know, as their task to work at CloudBees to do some work on this project or CodeFresh or GitLab, um, that's going to help us push it along a lot faster. We just don't have enough money and um, and time behind the project, and I don't want it to just lay dormant because we don't have that. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay.
Great. Um, anything else on, on this need to discuss uh, today? I mean, we, we had we want well, we had some agenda to review action items um, and a couple more things. So we can go for the rest of the agenda. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, action items then. Uh, so for the domain, um, so we reached out to the CDF and asked, and I think we are waiting for a response from Tracy Miranda on that, if I'm not mistaken. For the Twitter handle, um, I register the underscore city events. It's with a personal email of mine at the moment, but I guess we'll uh, need to transfer it to some some group email. I'm, I'm not sure what's the best, uh, what the usual strategy for, for Twitter, but at least we have the handled, uh, the, the handle uh, reserved. So once you have the logo, we can set up the logo and start using uh, the account to announce things that we want to announce. You, you know what we may want to do is just grab a Gmail account like cdevents at gmail.com or something like that and use that to register some of this stuff because sometimes it just makes it easier when, it, when you go to transfer things around. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I use, you can have like uh, temporary email accounts, Alice's with Gmail. So if you just add your email address plus something, it will be still routed to your uh, mailbox. And that's what I used. Um, but yeah, okay, I can have a look uh, what it takes to, to register a Gmail account. I don't know if it's possible to reg register it for an open source project or for an organization. Um, a question, is Google Groups uh, an alternative there? Uh, Eric, it's funny you mentioned that. I was going to say the same thing. Should we create a Google Group? I don't know how the Gmail account works, but the Google Group, at least, uh, it's uh, you're easier to uh, give access to people and so on. Yeah, I don't know what we do with Ortelius without Google Groups because that's everybody knows the meeting times and everything else. And as we reach out to folks, we might be able to say, can we just add you to the Google Groups for now? And then you can start watching what's happening in the project. Yeah, we at Ortelius, we use the Google Groups to hold the calendar invites. Um, so when you create a calendar invite, instead of uh, you just invite the group as the participant, it makes it a lot easier um, at that level. Now, I can't remember. Um, I think you can have multiple owners on the Google Groups. Um, so I think anybody yeah. can create it. Yeah. Yeah, you can have multiple owners on Google Groups. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, we, we use them for text on as well, Google Groups. And you can have open ones and you can have like, uh, by invitation only, being restricted ones. Uh, the um, one we use is it's anybody can join, but they have to be approved uh, to before they get access to everything. So right. in, instead of it just being random, you know, like a spam bot joining it, you can kind of semi filter out. <laughs> mm. who's, yeah, who's I mean, if, if you want to use a Google Groups like for the Twitter account. That's need to be only for owners of the, of the account, right? So, but we can create them many. Um, uh, we can have one for owners and one for like, general. Uh, and then um, you can create a, um, on the Google Drive, uh, we can create up and you can share the documents, uh, any documents or a folder based on the Google group instead of individuals. Uh, mm -hmm that makes things a little bit easier too. And on the Twitter account, um, if we use TweetDeck, um, then we can 
uh, whoever creates the Twitter account can invite others to um, to post. Okay. Um, it's called it's TweetDeck. TweetDeck, yeah. I think that's what's called. Yeah, that's it. I just don't. I don't remember the website URL for that. I'll tell you right now. Uh, instead of a KT there. Um, I'll update that. I can find it. Well, here, I'll just put it in the chat for you. Oh, okay. okay. Why can't I find my doc? Oh, it's right there. You got it. Right. Okay. Um... All right. Um... Okay, yeah, I'll have a look at this. Um, try to set up a um, couple of Google groups then. And I'll have a look at the third deck as well. Okay. Um, anything else on Twitter and accounts? No, moving forward. Um, Steve to share his ideas on SPDX. That's for a later meeting, right, Steve? Right. Uh, I am. Uh, I am learning a lot more about what's happening uh, on that side, uh, especially around a couple groups. Uh, the Open Source Security Foundation. Um, they are doing a lot of work um, around use, utilizing the SPDX um, uh, spec. So it's it's interesting that um, that everybody's trying to you know trying to kind of figure out what's happening with the the spec there uh, and how to use it. So. Um, I'm just getting more information at this time that I'll be able to, to present something down the road. Okay. And uh, since you mentioned the um, OSSF, um, one thing that, uh, one area that I've, we, we, we have not explored until now, I think, but we might consider for the future, giving the uh, whole attention on the uh, software supply chain security is whether we need to consider security features in the protocol, things like um, making sure that you can um, identify the source of an event as a trusted one, or if you need to do some kind of signature in, in the events or this kind of topics, uh, I think they're interesting to consider for the protocol in the future. And that sort of, isn't that what Tecton Chains does? Um, yeah, but Tecton Chains does not um, do that for events specifically. So what Tecton right. Chains does, it, it watches your pipelines and it will um, write an attestation to um, record, so to a transparent log, so that you can anyone can go and have a look at what was the pipeline they generated a certain build. And it will also sign container images automatically for you, kind of out of band. Yeah, I think, like you said, it's. I think it's going to be two sided. Um, one is going to be, uh, like you said, knowing that an event is secure, um, and the second part is listening to security events, like a signature has been completed, um, or a signature needs to be done. So I think uh, it'll be twofold that we'll need to look at down right. the road. 
Oh, there's a, they have um, the Open SSF has six, currently they have six working groups. One of them is security tooling. Um, maybe if we look at these and decide which one that we might be able to be involved in, um, then uh, something that uh, Steve could start attending those meetings. I think it would be not, it wouldn't be vulnerability disclosures or identity, identifying security threats or best practices. There is one called digital identity. It may fall into that one. I yeah. know that's a new foundation, so I think there will be some new things that need to come out of it. Yeah, they're they're very it, new. It needs to grow. <laughs> yeah, well, they we met with Brian while we were at the um, leadership summit. Um, they've had a big infusion of cash pushed into this. They have, I think, eleven pr premier um, uh, vendors, so they've got some money behind them, um, and so I think that this is going to grow. So we're, we're gonna, we'll keep our eye on what working groups we might wanna be part of to cross pollinate. I think, I think you're, go ahead, Tracy. I was gonna say, I think you're right, Andrea, this is an area that we probably wanna have a discussion at, or, or our event should include security. I, th I, th I think for now, we just proceed as normal developers and ignore security until later. <laughs> <laughs> until we get further along with our stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, developer yeah, mindset. Exactly. <laughs> like someone asked me, uh, how do I send Tecton Cloud events to an endpoint that requires authentication? And I was like, oh, does something like that exist? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we do send events that require username, password to be delivered. I never even thought about that. And then, and then before we, I, I know you have a, this list that you're trying to get through, and I don't want to make this longer, but we do have um, KubeCon Valencia. The uh, request for proposals are open until December, I think, 17th. So we might want to be looking at if anybody wants to submit a talk there. Yeah, sure. And the CFP is some closes sometime in December. Yeah, I think it's the 17th. OK. Yeah, that's something we should definitely do. Um, yeah. And Car, do you know if the CDF is going to have a booth there? Has that been discussed yet? I assume we will, but I can double check that. Okay. I think it's a pretty safe assumption for KubeCon. Uh, being Europe, I might be able to be there in person this time. That would be awesome. Steve and I are thinking about making a trip to Spain in May. Doesn't sound too bad, Spain in May. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't no. sound bad at all. Andrea, right. uh, what is another yeah. conference you spoke with, you spoke on? Uh, it's in the beginning of, is it like February or something? For them. Um, oh, yeah. you're going to be at Fostum? Awesome. They, they yeah. usually have a CICD room at Fostum. Yeah. When is the call for paper for that one? I'm not sure, but it's probably... It's probably past. Let me look. Yeah, the call for participation, it, it looks like it ended on November 2nd. Oops. Well, maybe not. I'm going to take my side. This is 2020. 
November 30th, so you have a developer rooms issue call for participation. I don't really understand what these are. Developer deadline for developer room proposals would be in one week, the November 15th. Yeah, so the, the, the way they do it, I think they have a general conference CFP and then they have these dev rooms, which are like tracks dedicated to a I see. topic. And they have an independent CFP. So usually the CICD dev room will have its own CFP um, that's announced on their mailing list, I think. Um, yeah, there it was the November 15th. Yeah, that's the deadline for developer room proposals. Um, then 30th of November, developer rooms issue ah. call for participation. So the CFP will start on the 30th of November. Yeah. And then where is my... Oh, the Zoom bar gets in front of my... And it looks like it's going to be all remote. Okay. That's a I think Fosim's all virtual this year, the, you know, coming year. And do you know if the CDF is uh, applying for any developer proposal rooms? Not any specific one. I think the CICD room is the most natural room. So we should just keep an eye out on the 30th if we want to submit something. I'm going to put that in my calendar. And it happens to be the day that we're having a meeting <laughs> on the 30th. So why don't you put it at those in the minutes that we have to be reminded on the 30th if we want to update the CFP. All right. Um, okay. Um, so, anything else on Meetup conferences? I like know. Um, right, going back to the list of action items, uh, able to update the meeting in the CDF calendar to allow the DST that was done. Um, Eric will add comment on the CD event artwork issue. Yeah, that was done, and there's been some discussion in that issue after that, so we can close this. Okay, so do we need to? Does it make sense to review it now? Is there anything? Yeah, let's take a look at what they've got for us. I really, really love the, the logo. I don't know if the colors are right, but I really, really like the logo. With the uh, yeah, D. This one? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure about the color palette. Um, I actually think the second one's better. But um, the, the blue greenish one? I kind of, I'd like the blue green, but if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that the second, keep going, good, going, going. See that one has an orange and it's oh, yeah. kind of orange. The only reason why I like this, because it fits more with the CD Foundation's logo. It kind of brings the, the color for the, but it still has a, a nice rainbowish kind of look. But I, I think that we did a great job in coming up with that logo. Kudos to all. I don't think it matters the colors too much, but. If we had to pick, I would probably pick that one because I like the way the CD looks. Feels more like CD events or CD the CDF. 
Yeah. Uh, it's nice that the, the font is thicker of CD, so it kind of... Exactly. Um, the only uh, the only ask I had is, can we have also a version of the logo which is more compact? Like yeah, the, the stacked template? version. Yeah, but that's a horizontal. We need to see it. So, yeah, so we have to be able to make sure it fits on um, in a horizontal or a stacked way. And I don't know, go back down. See, that, that feels horizontal to me. Yeah. Uh, if you go up a little bit, I think they try to give us a stacked version. Keep going up. That one is probably more of a stacked version. But I, so we should ask for something that would be clear of what, what it would look like in a stacked version and in a horizontal version. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, now I'm gonna throw a, a, a wrench in this. And what if we move the, like the broadcast over to the T instead of on a D and then your stack version, you just drop CD and it just be events. Does that make sense? I think we'd be better to um, keep the CD than, than the events. But I, let's let them come up with a, let's see if they can, let's use this logo and let them figure out how to make it uh, a, a, st a, stack. a stack. Stack version. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I just didn't. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I thought the idea would, was nice as well to have it on the TV. Yeah. So I would I would um, just go back to them and ask them for us this last one that uh, Eric you you pointed out here. Uh, ask them to do a stack version of that one. Yeah. Okay. We might want to see if uh, Emil's happy with that. He's worked hard on here. I hate to make a decision on a particular version of it without him saying, yeah. Yeah, but I think regardless the uh, variation, we, we need to have a, a stack version. So we could yes. at least have a, a stack version concept and then you know, we can and then we can worry about the colors. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Okay. Um, so Steve, you said you wanted to, to comment on the issue and ask for a stack version, or I can also do it. Just go ahead, while you're there, just go ahead and comment and ask for a stack version of the, the one ML, or is it Eric? ML. Do we need to say also somewhere? Yeah, we'd like to also have a stack version. Okay. Good. Uh, to here. All right, so it feels like we're getting closer. Um, to, right. Um, proposal we discussed already. Thanks, Steve, for driving that work. Um, yes, I reached out to Garima. I haven't heard back from her yet, Kara, but she is in the middle of their um, DevOps Summit Canada right now. So I'm assuming she will be a little more um, uh, available after this is over. It's today and tomorrow. But I have a not, um, in terms of somebody taking over, I have uh, my last one will be on uh, next Wednesday, I believe. And then I will um, resign from that CDF meetup. Uh, so somebody else, as an organizer, so somebody else can take it over. I don't know if Karima has found somebody yet. 
Okay. But Absolutely. she's been pretty, I know she's been swamped with getting, you know how it is when you're trying to organize a big event like that. Right. Great, thanks for the update, Tracy. Um, yeah, that's all of the action items. Uh, then I, so based from other group, CDF, DSC, I don't believe there is any thing, any update mm, there. Not that I recall, nothing from the TSC at this time. Uh, interrupt, there was no meeting. Uh, sick best practices. Um, there's no dates that I'm aware of. From the vocabulary work stream, um, yeah, we had a meeting last week. Uh, I think we had very constructive discussions. So we started reviewing some of the GitHub discussions that we have opened and started making decisions about what we. Uh, about them, uh, so defining some of the features of the protocol. So I think we, we made progress with productive um, meeting. Um, yeah, I don't know if there is anything more specific that Matthias or Rick you would like to. I uh, can just briefly mention that that uh, we have decided that we will uh, look into having like a, an, a hierarchy of of activity related events, one generic, and then uh, a set of, of concrete events under that, uh, generic to allow for flexibility and uh, specific or concrete to promote alignment. So hopefully that will go in line with, with what we want to do. Uh, I just added a, a note to the next meeting agenda that uh, I think uh, we can really use this uh, January, February timeline timeline that Tracy talked about before for like going out to broader broader audience to push ourselves a little bit, which is always nice, but we should then figure out what do we want to have in place before January, February and focus on that. And then I think it may be something, I'm not sure Tracy or, or maybe Kara, if, if you have any experience with that, like how, what should we do now to prepare for having a bigger group? Because uh, yeah, death by consensus and stuff like that, we want to try to avoid. And, and I think, yeah, we have an opportunity to set some some foundations for for managing more participants. And uh, yeah, we don't need to solve it now, but it would be an interesting discussion. Yeah. So you know, on the in terms of a project um, guidelines and whatnot, uh, Ortelius has taken a lot from um, uh, Jenkins. We stole a lot of their. Uh, guidelines and whatnot. Um, I would be happy to go through what we've kind of we kind of, we scaled some of them back and made them ours. But I would be happy to in a future meeting to go through what those guidelines look like. We should think about if we do want to have a governing board for our project. And I think you're right, Eric. Having kind of those ducks in a row will make us. Um, look like a tighter organization when it comes to January or February. And we might want to then have a, kind of a governing board um, uh, election around that time. Uh, that may, in, you know, increase the interest of some folks, uh, from some of our like harness and code fresh to get involved. But I think that's a good point. And we'd be happy to show. It's funny you bring this up because you asked Cara, one of the things I said that we need to do is as a CD foundation, we should come up with an easier way of tracking or setting up a new project. You know, what are all the pieces and parts that need to go into that, like the guidelines um, that should be displayed on the website and on those, you know, just really process pieces that is sometimes hard to know what you're supposed to do yeah. with it. So when should we have this discussion on looking at governance for the CD events project. Do you want to present next time, Tracy, and we start discussing it in more detail? It's, yeah, it won't take long. Better. It definitely will not take long. We, um, I, I, what I did was I took, I took some of the guidelines from the Eclipse Foundation, some from the CD Foundation, and some from the, um, uh, the, uh, the CDF or the or Jenkins, and kind of made them simple and easy to follow. Uh, so I'm happy to go through what we did there, and we can modify them from there. So yeah, anytime, won't take long.
That's good. I think a, a focused discussion on that is a really good idea. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Um, yeah, I I think that would be one of the requirement as well for the application as a project to the CDF anyways, to have a governance in place. Yeah. So something that can be earlier than rather than later. It's taken us a year to figure it out. I know it sounds crazy, but you have other things that you're doing and we just kept postponing it. And we finally pulled it together and we finally had a nomination and we're gonna have elections and we'll have a board by this December 8th. But it does take some time and thought. And it's not, it's not fun. <laughs> it's just boring. I mean, for, for Tecton, I believe we, we had a bootstrap um, governance, which was not elected with more like uh, volunteers or people who founded a project and then like sometime later, we set up more like policies and then at an election and we started with the electing governance. Uh, and that's yeah. a really fair way to do it. And we can put that in place um, even, you know, before the end of the year, that sort of like bootstrap committee. We did the same when setting up a full technical committee and we had a bootstrap committee first. Yeah. With the people interested and then uh, created all the documents and everything. And then we had a election and so on. And maybe we just do a bootstrap committee in December and just spend a couple of days focusing on it and get it done. Um, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot. I think all of us have had enough experience with open source. We'll know what we need to put together. Okay, uh, is that something we want to discuss in and in this meeting, right? Uh, I think we should, I think we should. Okay. So we can put it in the agenda for next time. Um, and maybe we okay. just do it, we'll have to do it, pick a few of us and just do another call outside this meeting, but I think it should be discussed next time in this meeting. All right. Yeah, I put it for the next meeting, so. All right, uh, we only have two minutes left. I don't know if you want to start any other discussion. Uh, is there anything else that folks would like to discuss in this remaining two minutes or one minute now? Otherwise, we can close to for today. The only thing I want to say while, while we're all on this call, and Steve is on the call too, is Steve, we need to um, link up about looking at making a, a landscape for some of the vocabulary for the interrupt. Okay. And maybe linking, you know. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. That's, so let's see the events, the CDF landscape. Um, yeah. Um, so is, is there any place in particular in the landscape you think you have in mind already or? Uh, Cara, I thought you're going to have a working group on the landscape. Yes. Um, I was just waiting for last week to go by because just focusing on that and then we're going to be setting it up and we're going to, I'm actually going to set it up this week. So I'll send around a, a doodle and, and to set up a time for the working group because we have a lot of, um, a lot of commentary now on potential categories for the landscape. So I think a first iteration would be really good, but that's perfect for your question, Andrea, because if you feel that there isn't a proper category for CD events, then please um, make an issue on the landscape repo because we're, we're okay. really looking at all the categorizations right now. Sorry for all the clocks. All right, um, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, I think we are at time now. So thanks, uh, good to see everyone. Thanks for a great meeting today. And have a good rest of your day. Okay, thank you.
Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you.